Okay, so yeah, we have this situation. It, it, it's, I didn't write this very clearly, but you have your x of ti star, y of ti star, looking at your typical increment of your partition. So you want a delta s. Here's your delta s. Take your derivatives of your position and your, well, your uh, x and y position functions, and you get what you can think of as velocity, but in general it's just plain old r prime, right? It's x prime of ti star i plus y prime of ti star j. And the, the primes aren't written very well, and I have one here and erased it. So you should understand what this vector is. We use it again and again, okay? Um, then you have your delta s. What's delta s? It's just your velocity vector multiplied by delta t, right? Or your r prime delta t. So your velocity vector is v of t i star, and I didn't write that v of t i star or r prime of t i star, but implicitly that's what they have to be because on this increment everything is evaluated at t i star. Okay, so v of t i star times delta t i. And then we can write that out or as r prime of t i star delta t i. Okay. In any case, it's x prime of t i star i plus y prime of t i star j delta t i. So the integral of f dot d s is the integral of, call it f sub x i plus f sub y j. And it, notation's a little ambiguous. That doesn't mean the x derivative and the y derivative, because that's just another notation. But it's the x and the y components of your f vector, right? Dotted with. And it becomes this, right? Which becomes the integral of fx times x prime plus fy times y prime dt. It could also be written is the integral of f dot r prime dt, right? And in any number of other notations, but if you have your parameterization, it's very straightforward. And what I don't want you to do, if you can possibly avoid it, is shortcut the whole picture by memorizing a formula. Because the picture is very straightforward. If you know the picture, you can get the formula. If you can reason out the picture, you can reason out the formula. And when you're used to doing this sort of thing, you know, if you practice a little bit, uh, it becomes natural. You just think in terms of the picture, and you derive the thing. And if you happen to also memorize the formula, okay. If you memorize the formula and don't understand the picture, you're in very shaky ground. So, most people will bypass it. They'll memorize one formula or another and apply it. And then when they get to the question of what's the normal component of this thing, they got to memorize another formula.
instead of work from this original picture. Okay? And then if you generalize it into higher dimensions or do whatever, you've got to memorize new formulas. One, one picture suffices to explain it all. So if you can understand the picture and how you move from the picture to here, you're way ahead. If you can't, memorize the formula and hope you get it right. <laughs>